afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Fantasy Local Podcast. Local, not local, but fantasy from these parts. You are on the air with the hostess, Sh- with the hostess, sharing the good news that you can use as we talk community awareness and keep you in the know. I am Angela Woods, aliasly known as that Laura Hill girl, and I have the privilege of having as a special guest today, you guys, the AC. FP Executive Director, Mr. Todd Leahy, the Arts Center at Fountain Park. That's right. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. No, thank you. And we are on the air. Mr. Leahy, tell us about yourself. Born and raised in Spartanburg, a kid in the upstate. Uh, Went to Spartanburg High School, where we regularly beat Northwestern and Rock Hill and most things. (laughs) Went off to college where I met my wife. We went to grad school at Wake Forest. So it was our first step down into the South together. Uh, We settled in Charlotte about 20 years ago. I was a banker for BB&T before I got into the nonprofit world and fundraising Mm -hmm. about 16 years ago. And then joined uh, the Art Center at Fountain Park uh, about a year ago on August 1st of 2022 an organization that is striving to build a brand new performing arts center for this region, wow. defined as Chester, York, and Lancaster counties. Uh, so it was a great chance for me to come back to a state that I grew up in uh, and to do something for the community and certainly something that's one of my passions. Now this is going to be, this is huge. This is huge news and as I'm speaking to you, you know, because when I found out, it was new to me. Mm-hmm. So there may be others out there that don't know that this is going to be happening and coming to the Rock Hill area. So I'm, I'm appreciative that you're coming on and letting us know about it. So tell us more about the center. So I had to do a class in the springtime for um, lifelong learning put on by the city of Rock Hill where she asked me to take a look backwards at the history of the performing arts centers in this community. Mm -hmm. And really there aren't that many. Uh, You've got Burns Auditorium and Johnson Hall over at Winthrop. Mm -hmm. You've had some cinemas and movie houses in the history of Rock Hill. You've got um, Bundy Auditorium over at USC Lancaster. Mm and some other places around the community that have just been okay to use. But there's never been anything like this that is dedicated solely for the performing arts community. Uh, It's obviously gonna be in Rock Hill, Mm -hmm. but it's gonna be for a wide swath of this region. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is a chance to build something that will be used all the time by local performers, as well as regional and national touring groups that want to come through. It's going to be about 521 seats. That'll put it in the same vein as a night theater, or not a night theater, but the Booth Playhouse up at the Blumenthal mm-hmm. Performing Arts Center portfolio up in Charlotte, mm-hmm. or other venues in Greenville or in Columbia. And so we will have something that is comparable to those cities right here in our community. So the folks do not have to drive an hour or an hour and a half to another city to go see something they want to see right here. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So the space will be available to the community. Yes, absolutely. We want uh, to fill this place not only on the weekends. Obviously, you've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday matinees. But we want this to be a learning hub throughout the week. Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, we want this place really jumping. Mm -hmm. Uh, We want business meetings there. We want classes to be held there. We want receptions in the lobby. We want people coming by for coffee if we've got a coffee stand in the building. We want this to be the community's performing arts center. Definitely go-to spot for Mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. I love it. Now, and I love the commitment to the values of, of local culturalism. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be, will there be diversity of arts and culture? Well, there are obviously already is in this community. Yeah. We want that to be celebrated in our building. Um, that's a big commitment of mine, personally and professionally. Our board reflects that. We have a very diverse board. Um, and we want anybody who lives in this community to sit in the audience 
look on stage and feel like whoever's up there is speaking to them yeah. or is performing for them. They see themselves on stage. That's our goal. I, I'm, I'm just like baffled, but you know, it's excited because, you know, you hear about it in the larger cities, but for it to come to Lancaster County mm -hmm. and Chester, you know, and surrounding, uh, that's going to be just unbelievable. Well, this community has a history of actors and musicians and mm -hmm. dancers. Um, obviously, when you go down to Chester, um, that's where Debbie Allen and Felicia yeah. Rashad are from. Yeah. And their mother still lives down there. And we've had bands that have come out of Rock Hill. Mm -hmm. And we've got performers and actors and yeah. actresses that have come from this area. And we want to tap into that same kind of uh, talent. Uh, I was, over the weekend, I was at Matilda, put on by Showtime yes. Theater Company, yes. which was absolutely amazing, and all local talent. And the singing was impressive, mm -hmm. the performances were incredible. And so I'm sitting there in the audience thinking, this is going to look dynamic yeah. from, this, from our stage in the next few years. Wow. Uh, and to my understanding, the young lady um, that starred uh, is Satasha. Uh, she's actually the granddaughter to my pastor yeah, over at New Covenant. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, and they've been rehearsing. I mean, they, they've been really just at it. So I, I've heard it's good. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're hoping to see it in the next weekend or two. That's good. Well, it's we only got one more weekend. This coming okay. weekend. Oh, four okay. shows: Friday, two on Saturday, and then one on Sunday. Okay, and that's at Winthrop. It's over at Winthrop. Okay. At Johnson Hall. Johnson Hall. Okay, good stuff. Um, and now, Immense is on the site um, that is coming to life, the center. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are past the, are we past the blueprint side of things? Good question. So we hired our design team earlier this year. Uh, we are in the schematic phase of the design process right now. So we went through a pre-design phase where they came to town, they asked the building committee what kind of performing arts center we want. Uh, what size, what kind of budget we have. And then they went back into their studios and started to put pen to paper and, and shared with us that we're looking at a you know, 36,000 square foot center that'll have 520 plus seats. Uh, and so from that, at our first schematic design meeting, we started to look at the shape of the theater itself within the building, the shape of the building, what it's going to look like on the property, what kind of lobby it's going to have, how many community rooms we're going to have access to, a terrace that could be a great reception place on top. Mm -hmm. And so that's really just the, the skeleton of the building. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to go and take a look at this region and start to figure out what are the native materials. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we've got a history with Tabas. Yeah. What are they known for? We have a textile history. Um, how can we start incorporating some of that material into the skin of the building so that it starts to reflect yeah. this community? Mm -hmm. But we also have a chance with the design team to make some wow factors. That when you're walking through downtown yeah. and you come across this performing arts center, you'll be blown away that that's right here in this community. And so we have tasked them, given our budget, to go back to their studios and create some really impressive, we call them Instagrammable spots in yeah. the building where you want to get your picture taken. Where <laughs> when you're at Fountain Park, you turn around and you see this incredible building and you think that's ours, that's this community's yeah. building. Yeah, it'll match how Fountain Park looks. It will, it really will. In fact, if you look at the designs, the preliminary designs, the building itself, and then we have the ability to put some green space behind the building where we could have some outdoor programming. If you look at it from an overhead shot, it almost doubles the size of Fountain Park and it really creates an extension from the downtown section of Fountain Park through our building and down into uh, South Rock Hill. That's gonna be good. Um, I do know, so that's where they have, in the wintertime, they have the ice skating. That's right. Okay, set up there. So they do. all of that area, mm -hmm. that's gonna be good. Um, and already, you know, everyone is familiar with that. So let's talk campaign. <laughs> yes. 
Um, are there annual fundraisers that we need to be aware about or that's already happening? Well, so we are in the quiet phase of our campaign right now. And quiet does not necessarily mean secret. Um, it just means that we are trying to go land some of the bigger naming opportunity gifts right now. And once you have a certain percentage of those in the door in terms of pledges, then you start to take the campaign public. And public means you are out there having some of those events that you just mentioned. You are having receptions. Um, we are having awareness events. We are sponsoring things at uh, Christmasville or next spring's um, Come See Me Festival or other festivals in other communities where we are a more visible part of community events. There is also a public side of the campaign, private dollars and public dollars. We are hoping for support mm -hmm. from the state of South Carolina, and that's in the process too. The city of Rock Hill has been extremely supportive of this project. They have done a bunch of work on the front end for infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, we are lining up some of those naming opportunity gifts right now, and when we start to get close to 18 to $20 million in private funding, then we'll go public and start to capture the tail end of the public or the private piece of our campaign. The private piece, okay. Yeah, but it's overall a forty million dollar project, wow. which is an aggressive campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, to my knowledge, I, I I don't think that this community has done a campaign of that size in a, in a very long time, if at all. Mm -hmm. um, so it involves a special kind of philanthropy. And I view this as a true community asset more than a, just a performing arts center. So when you look at it through that lens, anybody and everybody in this community can get involved in the campaign. It's not just your arts lovers. It's anybody who's ever been here, who's from here, who lives here now, and wants this for their community, there's a place for them yeah, so in this campaign. I'm glad you answered that. That was my next question. You know. Um, you know, as to becoming, how do we become an arts advocate in the sense of being a donor? So we just contact the website? Yes, so obviously there's a way to get engaged through our website. You can sign up to receive newsletters and emails. You can sign up uh, as a volunteer. You can sign up as a donor. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, when we start selling tickets to shows in the theater, we're gonna be building out a pretty robust um, database of, of supporters, mm -hmm. ticket buying public, as well as people that have contributed along the way. And so it's a chance for them to get more involved in keeping this a sustainable community center. Um, just getting it built is one step. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to maintain your operations. And ticket sales will do some of that, but we will need annual contributions to keep, to keep this center up and running. Uh, you mentioned um, how folks can get engaged in the arts. We have a very um, robust art scene here in this community. In fact, Rock Hill was named South Carolina's first cultural district yeah. several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been others since then, but we have a history of uh, a dynamic art scene. And I've always viewed supporting the arts is not an and or proposition, meaning, well, I, I support the symphony, so I really can't support the visual arts. Uh, this community can support all of it, I think. And I want people to view supporting the arts as an and and proposition. That they can they can support everything that's going on in this community, including what we're trying to accomplish with our center. Okay. Are you familiar with Artsphere? I am. Oh, okay. And that's Greenville, right? It is. Yeah, and that's like oh my god, on a whole other level. So that's gonna be I'm sure that they'll migrate this way for that for the center also. So you bring up an interesting city, Greenville. I grew up, again, in Spartanburg, right next to Greenville. And, and Greenville was always the big center mm -hmm. of the upstate, the business center of the upstate. Mm -hmm. I never viewed it as the arts center until it got the Peace Center in the early 90s. And the Peace Center, when I was in high school, was simply a main performing stage where they brought in a lot of your traditional concerts and symphonies and ballet, whatever you think of it in a community performing arts center would be there. Yeah. Well, in the last 30 years, Greenville has expanded the Peace Center 
where it is multiple venues on one campus. Mm -hmm. It has really invigorated a section of downtown Greenville um, where there wasn't anything there when right. it was built. Yeah. So you had a hotel at one end of downtown, you had a peace center at the other end of downtown. They closed off one of the streets and made it a pedestrian friendly downtown. Yes. And in the last 30 years, they built a new baseball stadium downtown. They've got breweries everywhere, condos going up every day. Mm -hmm. And all that happened when they decided to anchor a part of their downtown mm -hmm. with a performing arts center. Mm -hmm. We can have that same kind of anchor yes. here. Rock Hill is the fifth biggest city in South Carolina, but yet we are exporting a lot of our cultural venues to other parts of the Carolinas. Right, yes. uh, we don't have that here, and I think that it, it, this is a great time to do that. Mm -hmm. Rock Hill is growing majorly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are moving this way, you know, so it's like moving from Charlotte to here, from all the different states, and I'm, I'm loving the growth of it. So it's interesting you mentioned the growth. Um, I'm going to borrow somebody's great quote that I saw recently that said, Rock Hill is not as South Carolina as Greenville, Columbia, or Charleston, mm -hmm. and, but it's yet not Charlotte either. It's in this section of the state that's sort of lumped into the metro area of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And obviously it was going to grow because we are near a metropolitan center. And Charlotte has indeed grown, mm -hmm. but one of the fastest growing parts of the Charlotte region mm -hmm. is right here in York and Lancaster counties, in Chester to some degree. Yeah. So people are moving to this area to perhaps work in Charlotte, but they're choosing to live in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, those two counties are growing faster than the overall Charlotte market. So yes, people are moving into that area, but they're choosing to live here. And by choosing to live here, we need to improve their quality of life. That's we need to give them things to stay home for. Yeah. And yeah. this will be one of those. Yeah. I, I, I watched Charlotte, I lived in Charlotte for 20 years, and, and I did observe when a lot of people wanted, to, they were moving to Atlanta, and they made that a comparison. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, Charlotte doesn't have any nightlife, you know, but then Charlotte stepped this game up. <laughs> and so I'm seeing the same thing happen uh, with Rock Hill mm -hmm. and the surrounding areas. Well, there's one other piece of it when you bring up Charlotte, mm -hmm. is we want this to be a center that helps the K through college curriculums mm -hmm. for any student of any age. And right now, for schools that are down here, if they want to go see a little bit of the symphony, or a little bit of theater. For a field trip, they've got a bus up to the Blumenthal portfolio in downtown Charlotte, which is growing increasingly difficult with the traffic that moves up and down at 77. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Chester will go down into Columbia, but even going down there is, is difficult. This creates an opportunity for the school systems to use a center that's right here in their own community, mm -hmm. um, that is for them, that is 30 minutes away, and they'll be seeing local performers up on stage. Um, that's that's going to be fantastic, you know. So, in addition, uh, is there anything additional that we sh we need to know so that we can press the needle forward? This is a big lift for the community. Everybody is excited about this project. Mm -hmm. The challenge is converting that excitement into support that will get this thing built. Um, obviously, we're going after uh, new and old companies. We're going after a lot of family foundations, a lot of individuals for support, but it's going to take everybody chipping in. Um, we have, we, we are a city, we are a community really, that's constantly looking forward um, to the next best thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. And this is the next best thing. We have world-class recreational sports in this community, we have, we have world class companies. When this community chooses to do something, it puts all its effort into it. That's right. And one of the nice things about this community is everybody generally knows what's going on mm -hmm. across the community. Your podcast certainly helps with that. Yeah. And everybody's willing to chip in. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christmasville is such an amazing event. And yeah. come see me festival. I mean, the festivals that are in the other counties too. 
Um, everybody just knows that if it's the holiday season, mm -hmm. we're going to be going out for Christmas bill stuff. And when it's the springtime, we'll be doing Come See Me Festival. That's a week long event, too. It really is. And so this community supports things that are going on here. Mm -hmm. There's a willingness to stay at home to go to things, meaning they, if there are options right here, they will support them. Yeah. We just have to give them those options. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm super excited for it. I can't wait. I hope to be one of the performing artists there. You know, <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> and so uh, can you give them the website information? So if you go to our website, which is, I believe, you know, I, it's it's one of the icons on my taskbar, so I never have to type <laughs> in the web address, but I believe the web address is something along the lines of theartscenterfp.org. You are correct. The yes. FP standing for Fountain Park. Fountain Park. Yeah. And for the long time, I'm like, what is the AC for? Not... There you go. Yeah. The Arts Center at Fountain Park. <laughs> okay, great. Well... You already know I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast today, you know. So we want to let you guys know that with the center coming to our area, it's definitely local, not local, but famous around these parts. We want it to be famous throughout the state and throughout the region. That's right. So 10 years from now, when you're still doing your famously local <laughs> podcast, you're going to be talking about the famous art center that we've got here in town. That's right. And have a good serenity on here. Yes, man. You guys, thanks so much for tuning in on today. And again, uh, you know, this podcast will air, uh, of course, on our site, but hopefully on the center's site uh, once we are up and, and going. I'll, I'll give that information. But again, Mr. Lane, thank you so much. Sure thing. Happy, happy to join you. I appreciate you. And I hope you come back. I will. Yeah, Keep yeah. inviting me. Yeah, I'm yeah. never going to throw that invitation. <laughs> we need updates, right? What's that? We need updates. Yes. We need to keep this center top of mind. Uh, and obviously, when we put shovels in the ground, we'll see the visual representation going up. But when we, we can't wait to send out a, a schedule to people's mailboxes. Cannot wait. I'm ecstatic. All right, fam. Have a great day. Take care.